so welcome back let us continue our discussion on cubic point groups so we have seen in cubic point groups how uh, the closed regular polyhedrons uh, actually there are five types of those and then they all form uh, different types of cubic point groups so let us try to list them now so the first one in the category is td and the symmetry operations i'm going to list for td point group so example is we have already seen and worked example for this one is a famous uh, methane molecule tetrahedral right now there are eight c3 operations then we have three c2s and six s4s and six sigma d's the total number of operations are uh, 24 so we call this as okay somehow order of the group as 24 which is total number of elements not the group elements as we have already discussed or in this case we can say total number of symmetry operations so you can see that it's a very large number so it's a highly symmetric point group now the second uh, is tetrahedral and then we have octahedral which is oh let us also list down we can see the example as ab6 e 8 c3s then we have 6 c2s 6 c4s will be there and 3 additional c2 primes will be there we have i 6 s4 so as you can see that there is large number and it is difficult to remember all the uh, symmetry operations so unless you actually uh, draw the molecule and try to identify all the symmetry operations so let me go there 8 s6 then you have 3 sigma h and 6 sigma t okay and the order of the group is also denoted by h is 48 here okay next in cubic point group is icosahedron denoted by i h so the example here includes uh, we have b12 h12 2 minus ion which takes up the ih so i'm not going to cover the shape again so we already know uh, the shape of the icosahedron so another example another uh, famous example is c60 which is uh, also called as buckyball it is not a regular polyhedron because here uh, you have alternating pentagon and hexagon faces right so we all know the structure of buckminster fullerene so c60 buckyball it is not a regular polyhedron but still it forms under ih point group so let's see the number of symmetry elements which is actually very huge in this highest for a symmetry point group actually 12c5 12 c5 2 20 c3 so we'll come back to this later why we can combine certain uh, set of operations into one number so and then for example typically we have been seeing that c3 and c3 square can be 
combined as one set of operations and then we can write it as 2c3 right but in this case c5 and c5 square belong to something called as different class okay so these two actually form different class and hence they are listed as separately we will come back to it what is a class once we uh, finish the point group identification okay so 15 c2 i 12 s 10 20 s 6 15 sigmas and 12 s 10 cube so order of the group is 120 so this is uh, the highest order symmetry point group only after i think c infinity v and d infinity h where h is infinity actually because you have infinity number of elements so after this the highest order point group is icosahedron ih and the examples we have already discussed okay so now you can see that uh, how uh, uh, there are different type of point groups available so let us again summarize them so summary of point groups so we have seen that uh, we had uh, non-rotational we had single axis rotational where there is only one rotational axis then we had dihedral then we had sn and finally we had cubic right so non-rotational included c1 cs ci single axis rotational included cn cnv cnh and c infinity v dihedral included dn so these symbols are called as Schoenfly symbols uh, of point groups. We will see how to classify different molecules into these point groups uh, depending on what our uh, symmetry operations are present. So D N H, D N D, and what else was there? D N H, D N D, and D N. Yeah, that's all. And then we have SN and cubic, we had seen TD, OH, IH. So actually, uh, cubic had more point groups. So let us also see uh, here itself. So if you remove sigma out of these three, so minus sigma, then you will get corresponding T. O and I point groups. So you can see that T, O and I point groups are subsets of T, D, O, H and I, H point groups. So T is a subset of T, D. Basically T, D, if you remove sigma, you will end up in T. O, H, if you remove sigma, you will end up in O. I, H, if you remove sigma, you will end up in I. So they have little less symmetry, uh, number of symmetry operations or lower order as compared to this. Now, and then one more is there. So if you add sigma h to t, you will end up in th point group. So you have seven, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven uh, point groups in this category. Okay. So I will list them all here. So you have t, o, i and th okay so i hope this is clear these are all the point groups that we have now how do we classify these uh, a given molecule into this 
and it is not easy because we have to list down all the operations and then we have to check each of this whether it belongs to a particular point group or that point group or this point group so there is a nicely made uh, flow chart let us look at this flow chart it is available in many books so but uh, i have adapted with my understanding i have adapted slightly differently but then let's see i mean you can see different versions of it but do not worry they all end up in same uh, classification of point groups so let's start with so you have so you are starting with a molecular structure and you ask yourself whether the molecule is linear okay so in a flow chart we typically ask questions and then depending on if it is yes or no we go to different sites right so if it is a yes then what happens and if it is a no then what happens if the molecule is linear let's say if the molecule is say yes the molecule is linear does it have i that is my next question if the molecule is linear then whether it is centrosymmetric yes leads to d infinity h point group and no leads to c infinity v point group so that is easy linear i yes yes d infinity h linear yes i no c infinity v point group now linear no then you have does the molecule contain two or more c3 axis okay so c3 axis are present but one c3 axis two or more okay so if it is two or more you go to yes question mark here if it is a yes then you, your next question is uh, and these have to be unique okay so c3 axis have to be unique now next is two or more unique c5 axis does it have it if it is a yes then you say then you ask again whether the molecule has an inversion center so uh, i understand that it is becoming very messy but then as you practice it i think it will become very clear then you assign it as ih if it is a no you assign it as the subset i okay now if there are no two or more c5 axis then are there two or more c4 axis so again you go to yes if it is yes again you ask for i if i is there then now you have guessed it right it is octahedral if it is no it is o o point group now if that answer is also no there are no two or more c4 axis then the next question is one or more one or more sigma okay if it is no then you assign it as t point group if it is yes then again you ask for if there is an i yes then it's a th if it's a no then it's a td okay so this section basically covers the cubic point group over here right
and then you have infinity point groups over here okay so now uh, let's go to two or more c3 axis if it is no so we'll have to go to next page because this will take entire page so let's go to two or more c3 axis and it was no side so does the molecule contain a proper rotation axis so that means next question is cn whether there is a cn present or not okay so cn if it is a yes versus no let's say if there is no cn axis then is there any plane if the plane is there or if the plane is not there so you ask the question sigma is present if it is present then you assign it as so these are uh, if there is no cn then this section will belong to non rotational point groups right so if sigma is absent then you ask if there is an inversion center if inversion center is present you call it as ci if inversion center is absent you call it as c1 right so basically these three belong to non rotational point groups and we have seen here this thing belongs to these seven belong to cubic point groups right okay so now let's see if cn is present yes then what happens then first you have to identify n that what is the order of that axis highest order and then you ask are there n c2s perpendicular to cn okay that is your question so first step is to identify n and then second step is n c2s perpendicular to cn okay so now if that is a yes then you will ask does it have a sigma h okay horizontal plane so horizontal plane meaning sigma h has to be perpendicular to the cn axis which is present okay now if it is a yes then you say it's a dn h point group dnh okay now this uh, has a special case for odd n if n is odd the uh, sigmas are called as there are n sigma v's of course there is one sigma h and then there is there are n sigma v's are present and for even n there are n by 2 sigma v's n by 2 sigma d's okay this you can confirm uh, by looking at different point groups okay all right now let's go to if there is no sigma h so if there is no sigma h then does the molecule contain or let's make some space for that one let me write it over here if there is a dihedral plane of symmetry okay so if it is there then you call this as d and d point group okay and there would be n sigma d's in this so this will help you assign how many sigma v's and sigma d's will be present in any particular point group 
and if it's a no if there is no sigma d then you call it as d n point curve okay also there is one important point for d n h if n is equal to 2 so that means there is a c2 axis and there are two c2 axis perpendicular to the original c2 axis so that means there are three c2 axis which are perpendicular to each other we have already discussed this case uh, previously so a c2 axis and there are two c2s uh, perpendicular to each other so that means uh, all the three c2s lie along x y and z coordinates right so if you try to put the molecule along the coordinate system so the three c2s will actually lie along x y and z so in this case the sigmas can be or sigmas are called as sigma xy it is sigma xy sigma yz and sigma zx because it is not easy to identify which one would you call it as uh, principal axis so uh, which one would you call it as sigma h versus the uh, two sigma v's right so ideally you should uh, have one principal axis out of these three but then it is not always simple to identify which one is the principal axis in certain cases yes you can do it but in certain cases you cannot so the easier way is to call c2 axis as c2z c2y c2x and the planes as sigma xz sigma yz sigma zx instead of calling it as uh, sigma h and sigma v's okay so that helps but this is only for d2h case where n is equal to 2 this happens because the three c2s are actually perpendicular to each other this is the only case where it happens that order is same and all three are perpendicular to each other so that's why there is this confusion but then uh, you can keep it for your notes okay this information also you may not find in books this is uh, after several rounds of discussions in class and this thing so you can uh, keep it for your notes okay all right so this was yes so now let's go to n c2s perpendicular to cn if there are no such cases then you will ask if there is a sigma h present and then if it is a yes then you call it as c n h again in this case uh, there would not be any sigma v present in the molecule okay and if there is no sigma h then you ask if there is sigma v present and if it is a yes then you say it's a c n v and again for this particular case for odd n there are n sigma v's and for even n there are n by 2 sigma v's and n by 2 sigma d's okay and if sigma v is not present then you say that does the molecule contain a 2n fold improper rotation axis so you ask if there is any s2n present if it is a yes then you call it as s2n point group if it is a no then you call it as cn point group and that is all so these are all uh, rotational point groups over here and then you have dihedral point groups over here so we we have tried to channelize by asking different questions into different uh, streams or different categories of point groups so now if if you notice that it really does not matter whether you are asking whether it's a sigma v or sigma d right 
So in any case, it will be uh, all the sigma v's, for example, here, if you see here. Uh, so let's start with here. So you are asking sigma h, which is easy to identify. So you don't care whether it's a sigma v or d. You're worrying about sigma h. Here you're worrying about uh, if there is no sigma h, then uh, any sigma will be present as uh, it can be called as sigma v or sigma d. So it does not, again, it does not matter how do you classify, but then it will be called as sigma d because there are n c2s perpendicular to cn. That's why it is called as sigma d. Okay, because there is a dihedral, uh, this is a dihedral uh, condition. So that's why there is a sigma d present. Now, again, here you are asking sigma h. And if sigma h is not present, then you are asking for vertical plane of symmetry. You don't care whether it's a sigma v or sigma d. It will not change the category of your point group, right? So you can still make no mistake if you accidentally say, see the, which one is sigma v or which one is sigma d. The problem is if you do not identify sigma h properly, then you may end up in wrong point group. But if you identify uh, the distinction between sigma h and sigma v, then you're all set. Then there is no problem. Okay. So we have seen how starting from molecular structure, you can ask several set of questions and arrive at linear cubic point groups. And then uh, uh, these are non-rotational point groups over here single axis rotational point groups, dihedral point groups, right? So that's very easy and uh, it should be simple and straightforward. So now let's start practicing, pick up different molecules, start asking these questions and see if you can arrive at different point groups. Okay, so I think that's all for today. So or let me uh, list down certain examples for you so you can or you can pick up different examples so let me also let me just list down certain examples so you can take water nh3 of course you need to know the structure of this bcl3 then you have ch4 CH3Cl, CH2Cl2, then let's say C6H6 benzene, then you have PF5, PF5 will be trigonal bipyramidal, then you have C3 C3H4 try to work out the structure and then the point group then H2O2 then C2H4 C2H2Cl2 and you can do cis and trans both conformations then we have staggered i have discussed the case of uh, one conformer of ferrocene right so, but this one is a different one staggered ferrocene and then you can also see eclipsed we have seen twisted ferrocene right eclipsed ferrocene and let's say br br okay also let's take certain examples of uh, let's say letter a letter e a sharpened pencil so a pencil would look something like this right uh, 
if you take the side view it looks so i'm trying to give you different uh, shapes just to see if you can actually find out point view. so this is the side view and then the top view will be something like this right to sharpen pencil so try to find out the point groups of these molecules so this will give you enough practice by following this uh, set of questions okay so do this in home assignment so i hope you are really following all the home assignment because it is uh, important to practice otherwise uh, the things will start to get complex very quickly and then uh, if you cannot identify a point group clearly it will be very very difficult later okay so let's stop today and uh, we'll discuss in the next lecture okay